Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we're going to take a look at the Cavalan. Single cast for selected by the whiskey world. This bottle is a 10-year-old sherry, Oloroso sherry, correct? If I'm not mistaken. From it the, might the almost be 11 years. Yeah. Uh, whiskey, we've determined by the number. 421 bottles of this particular 10-year-old, which is extremely old for a Cavalan. And at least a quarter of those bottles were purchased by people we know, or <clears throat> us. Yes, so <laughs> this whiskey review is a long time coming. Not only do we love this distillery, but on top, especially the heavily sherried ones. But on top of that, um, we fell in love with this particular bottle, not only from a price point perspective, but just from a quality perspective. Um, so we waited a long time to bring this review because, quite frankly, we didn't want it to sell out if we let everyone know it was a Whiskey World pick. As yeah. far as the barrel, there's only 421 bottles. This is a bottle 394. And with these bottles, um, the overseas um, online retailer was kind enough to ship one of their Glen Cairns with it. So I know, and first thing, I know without a doubt how many bottles of this I have purchased, which is 16. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been trying to hoard this whiskey. Uh, we've told a few people about it. Um, so again, this is uh, a single cast Cavalan. It is uh, 59.4% ABV. Yep. And there was a member of the community that told me about it. And mm -hmm. um, wow, Brent, you know who you are? Thank you, buddy. Yeah, so Brent, indirectly, I thank you as well. Because as soon as Dustin turned me on to this whiskey, uh, I said, where do I spend money? Where do I throw my money at? Take my money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just for the sake of transparency, uh, as far as cast number, this is S. S is in Sam 0812230278. A lot, of, uh, a lot of my friends have been able to get this whiskey. I have been incredibly impressed with it. We had it head-to-head -head with the Macallan 10 cast strength, which had outperformed in Dustin and I's eyes. Yeah, and let's be honest, guys. If you're expecting a serious review at this point, Mike and I are just giddy to drink this whiskey. Yeah, this is so, one of our favorites. You, we get slap happy. It's not that we're hammered. It's I just love this. Love this whiskey. Um, this is... As dark as it looks, probably on this camera, this is an insanely, insanely dark whiskey. If you know anything about this distillery, um, you know that they produce incredible whiskeys at five, six years old. Um, Ten years old is old for this distillery, and the subtropical climate that they're in, they age the whiskey so fast that there is always the um, fear of it being over oaked. Yes, or evaporating completely. And this is walking a fine line. <clears throat> yes, and I think you know the people who are not going to like this whiskey. It's gonna. They're gonna come up saying, "Guys, it's just too much oak for me." It's oaky. It is. But that Cavalan beautiful <sighs> oak. You can tell this was an incredible sherry butt that they found. That had just. It was just beautiful sherry cask. It was wet when they put this down, and as they kept letting it go, somebody just kept saying, "No, I like what this oak is doing. It's nice." It's not too pungent. It's not too spicy. But God, it's good. It's extremely aggressive. Um, if there was a guy holding out on not, not uh, bottling this, uh, he was in the minority, like we are. <laughs> this is incredibly aggressive. Almost bordering on like a soda. Soda nose. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those whiskeys where you, you start thinking meat and you start thinking salts. And you're like, no, it's just oak. Uh, but what it is is a huge sherry bomb. A huge cast rank, 60% 10 year old cherry bomb. It's such dark, a good cherry. Dark bitter chocolate. Oh, God. Dark cherries. Plums Sometimes, and intense raisins. In fact, it's rum soaked raisins, rum -soaked that, then, raisins. that then got poured in bourbon. Yeah. yeah. It's so dense, I'm working my way down the layers of what the raisin has gone through. Yeah. I mean, it's been drowned in rum, it's been drowned in, you know. There may have been some molasses in there. Yeah. Sugar. Oh, yeah. Honey. Put a pile of plums on top of that. Oh. And just, I mean, once you get past this, the aggressive sherry, beautiful yeah. chocolate. But you know what's amazing, Mike? I can still smell the Cavalon malt. Which yes. Is that clean, beautiful, yes. sweet, magical Cavalon malt, which we've got to get a bourbon cast review to you guys because Cavalon's malt is so good. But and it's heavily shared. No. I, I, well, you need a heavily shared wine cask for a lot of these. You do not. I'm telling you, their malt is so good on the bourbon casks. It's so good. It's lesser. No, it, it really it's not. I tell you, nothing I've had to match this sherry punch right here. 
No, but I'm telling this, you, this, this is this is just incredible dunnage smell. This is to me. it's absolutely dunnage warehouse, dirt floors. I don't know where they got these casks. I don't know where they store them. I've never seen Cavallon's Distillery. And every time I go back to this whiskey, even though I finish five bottles of this, every time you're impressed, aren't you? and I still have seven or eight unopened, I'm impressed every time I go to this whiskey. I often will end nights with this whiskey because it's heavily sherry whiskey. Yeah, and it's just—I mean, it's almost sixty percent. I mean, it is just—it punches through. There's no whiskey Everything. you're gonna, ever going to have Everything. that this doesn't punch through. Exactly what I was getting to. I don't care mm. if we're drinking Castro Lagavulin or Lafroig or Ardbeg or you know what, it, what we got into yeah. that night. Man, this will drive a stake through any armor. Yeah, there's just not. I mean, you could have been dr- sitting there eating creme brulee, drinking Lafroy 10 cast drinks, smoking cigars, smoking cigars, and then you're done. You're like, let me just pour this, and all you're gonna taste is Cavalon. Everything else that's in your mouth is gone. Yep, you could hit in the mouth and bleed, and then this would take care of it. Oh. Man, that dark, rich cherry along with that raisin note is just. The cherry and raisin with the oak is just incredible. And then, again, that clean, sweet Cavalon, like, just structured mm-hmm. malt. And it's just, it's so powerful. It has that dusty old oak note to it. I mm-hmm. mean, this smells like a 30-year-old sherry scotch. I have referenced this to being a 30 or 35-year-old mm-hmm. sherry whiskey every time. Like, this, you know, you think of Linkwood 37 we reviewed. Mm-hmm. Very similar. You think there. of Glenn going 30. If those, yeah. if those two had a baby yeah. at cast strength, and then it got amped up another 10% ABV, it was a first full, It was a first full sherry yeah. cast that just did magic. I know. I th- th- this was such an underrated bottle. That's why I felt bad. I told I told a lot of friends. I mean, but, you know, again, I, I bought 16 bottles. A lot of people have gotten a bottle thanks to us, as well as, you know, thanks to Brent. So, yeah. it's been... I feel bad not putting it on the channel because I know there's some of you guys that we don't have direct contact with. We don't. I, yeah, we, I wish more people would have got their hands on this one because there's only 421 bottles. Yeah. It was extremely reasonable. I think it was $128. I, we started buying these at like the low, maybe even under 120 And then yeah. we, we probably went up to about 140 depending on exchange rates. Plus shipping. Well, I'm talking just, oh, I think, yeah, I think yeah. the exchange rates, because we, we bought these over the course of a year. So yeah, I think the high end was 140 Yeah, so we, we saw the exchange rate, the dollar pound was moving, so it varied. Let me tell you something, bang for your buck, By the way, one of the best whiskeys we've ever Is there bought. any whiskey that's ever taught you more about the exchange rate differences? <laughs> <laughs> we, we just became kept buying a pro. this. I was like, oh, did the price? No, the exchange rate did. We're buying on Tuesdays. <laughs> it's one of the few times, like, I, I work in a, a treasury group so i'm pretty you know involved in exchange rates but the dollar and the pound are i look at them but i don't look at them as much as some other currencies let me tell you anytime i saw it dip i'd call mike hey mike i'm putting in an order we made exchange rates favorable right. <laughs> we needed any excuse to spend 150 dollars with shipping to get another one of these bottles and anytime i bought something it's great it's great all inside by the way anytime i got something from these guys i was like yeah just throw another one of those cavalans on there i need another glen yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, we should have done all the whiskey rubber glasses. Um, but we also found out that, by the way, they only were that that deal was only designed for three bottles at a time. And when I ordered six at once, and they only gave me three Glen Cairns, I emailed the guy back and I said, "Hey, what happened?" And he goes, "Oh, we never thought somebody was going to order six. No, no, you're right. It, well, to, to their credit, they sent you. No, they they, they, they put the glasses in yeah. there. Yeah, they've, they've always done a great. They're job. good guys. Yeah, always done a great job. But yeah, man, this is just. An epic, epic sherry bomb. And from a distillery we love that does sherry so, so well, <clears throat> this just took it to a dunnage, dirty place that this reminds me of Caden Head Highland Park 28. Yeah. Just like those epic one off single cast bottlings that just said, you know what? This is only going to appeal to a few thousand people, but we only got 400. Well, you know, I think for, for a lot of the people out there drinking, if you're not a Scotch guy and you're watching this channel or you got into Scotch after bourbon, Think back to that first time you had Elijah Craig barrel proof and you had that cast drink, just intense richness. And you said, wow, I'm looking at Scott and Bart right now. Yeah, this, this is, new. is, yeah, this is the bottle of wow from single malts. Yeah. This is a, if you are a sherried single malt guy, this is the bottle of wow. <clears throat> yeah. I will share this with, even though it was an inexpensive bottle with very few people. Because they're not making it anymore. Yeah. And I want this bottle. Of, I, have, I want some of this whiskey the rest of my life. And you know what, Mike? We've got to start buying every single cask of these we see out there. Because they're still out there from other places. Got to give it a try. They're a little pricier than we got a hell of a deal on this one. But <clears throat> Yeah, and whoever was at the whiskey world that picked out this cask, well done. Dude, high five. Mm-hmm. I mean, seriously, you killed it. Mm-hmm. And I know it took a while to sell out. That's because some people just weren't as smart as we were, mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
huge cherry punch. A lot of things I'll get from a first fill, but not like the, the egg note or the astringency of a first fill. Beautiful, big, sherried whiskey with none of the negatives. With none of the negatives. There's no sulfur. There's no... No, none of the egg negatives. Parts. No. There's none of that youthful, like, modern sherry where it tastes that like... Just tastes it was meant like, to be, like, poured into using cooking. <clears throat> that just tastes like 30-year-old first fill Glendronic single cask. But it's even richer than that. Dude, I'm getting plums, raisins, dates, <clears throat> cherries, everything covered in chocolate. I mean, at the end, I'm going to steal a note from somebody, but he nailed it. Malt Muser. Mm-hmm. Eric. Yeah. Root beer. Specifically A&W root beer. Foamy, rich root beer. And what is the flavor in that thing? It's sassafras? And like a vanilla. Yeah, it's like yeah, sassafras, yeah, 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 vanilla, yeah. with that oak. And then, I mean, there's just so much... There's chocolate, but it, there's like mm. these other notes that are similar to chocolate. They're in that realm. And it's kind of where the root beer is coming in. It's where <sighs> you might even get a little bit of black anise, but not not enough to where it's going to offend anybody. Because mm. I don't really like black anise, but there's hints of it kind of coming yeah, in. Yeah, but it's good in this. Yeah, and it, but it, it comes in with, but again, it's like black anise chocolate with a little bit of like, ah, the oak tannins are there. There is bitterness, but it's a, a different yeah, bitterness. Well, and the, the alcohol at the end there, I mean, it really bites at the end. But it's biting at the same time. All these flavors are exploding, just gripping your tongue, like just coating yeah. it with everything. Yeah, and this, oh, is, this is not a one-off where I'm just impressed by half a bottle. I have burned through five of these things. I've, I've, I've had at least three. I mean, I think you bought, I probably bought eight. You probably bought, you bought 16. I bought 16 for sure. I think I've only got three left, Mike. I mean, I have just killed these things. because yeah, I have I seven. Love. Oh, yeah, so if I have seven left, I've gone through <clears throat> nine. Yeah. <laughs> that puts in perspective, doesn't it? <laughs> you still on my floor. Anyway, yeah, we've been drinking on this bottle for a better half, better part of what, year and a half, I'd say, roughly? Maybe two yeah, years? Yeah, I mean, we've been through multiple bottles. We've we've taken this on, we've traveled, we've shared it with people. <clears throat> so this is the lesson. I mean, these independent single bottles, um, or these single barrels. It's not even independent, yeah, it's official bottling. Yeah, yeah, you're right, it's official bottling, it's not independent. <clears throat> uh, these store pick ones that they'll do, I mean... It seems like they have a certain standard mm-hmm. with some of their share releases, and it's an excellent high standard. I mean, they make incredible. I mean, we've done a few of them. You can check them out the Moscatel, the EX. I mean, they make just the regular ones. Oloroso, which is kind oh. of the foundation of this, but it's six years old. That thing is incredible. Incredible. And if you don't like heavy oak, that's the one to buy for sure. And none of them are nearly as heavy oak as this one. And, and, this is and intense. I, yeah, and I understand from their basic profile of their high end, you know, six, seven, eight hundred dollar bottles, they wouldn't <clears> go this heavily oaked. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't go this far in any direction. But that's what I like about it. I mean, it, you know, anybody who watched our channel knows we like cast drink with the mm-hmm. aggressive whiskey. Intense. And we like this distillery. This distillery is great. We anyway. love this distillery. And on top of that, you're going to give me one of the highest aged versions of it you can that's pungent, first filled, mm-hmm. high ABV. Come on. <laughs> it's, every, it's a dream, man. It's, it's literally a dream. A dream. And, it, and it was $130 a bottle, whatever it was, I was laughing every time I bought that bottle. You know, the only bottle I felt better about buying in my life, I bought plenty. Talisker 30 for $299. That was the only bottle I thought, I'm buying five more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but joke's on you, man. You have no idea. Because, again, it, 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 you think for that money, you can never get a sherried whiskey of that quality. Again. And for a single malt scotch, you can't. No. For a single malt <clears throat> Cavalan, there it is. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, there, there's whiskey. nobody in Scotland putting out anything at this level these days. Uh, this cask is incredible. At- also, I don't know if anybody's putting anything at this level, period. No. Uh, I mean, Cavalon really has, in my opinion, if you like big sherry bombs. S- single malt sherry bombs, this is it. Cavalon in general, I mean, are they're, they're probably the best distillery in the world right now. I yeah. think <clears throat> Glendronic was close for a while there for me. But, you know, as they're running out of old stock with the move to chill filtering. I think, you know, Cavalon has taken a step forward. Yeah, they're expensive, not, but not this one. And, no. like, all the single barrels are cheap. Yeah, all of them. Oh, I've got a peat. I got one that we finished in a peat cask. Mm-hmm. It was under two hundred bucks. Yeah, that was. I've never seen one over two fifty ever. <clears throat> and you know, normally they're high end ones. I've seen for six, eight hundred dollars, something like that. Yeah. They usually come down. That PX one was eight hundred bucks retail. Yes, I mean, but you know, not, I mean, those whiskeys are still worth it. I mean, if you again, if yeah. you like heavily sherried whiskeys, if you're talking Cowan twenty five something like that, you owe it to yourself to get one of these high end. Oloroso or PX cask yeah. ones. They are incredible. If, if you had a Macallan twenty five and you said, "Oh my god," but I just need more proof. And I want something that's richer, sherry. Yeah, and I want something that's not stupid priced. You will love Cavalon this. Avalon is your guy. They, they're better. They really are. It's, it's five and six years old. McAllen just—I mean—they don't have 
It's, right, not, right, it, it's not just McAllen. They can't, it, they can't touch it. Yeah, it's not McAllen. It's, not, it's all <clears> the sherry. Glendronic, they're yeah. not doing it. It's Glen Farkos. It's all the big sherry. Glen Alaki. Yeah. They can't touch it. Yeah, I mean, they're just, they're not there yet. If you, I've said it before, if you want a non peated single malt sherry bomb whiskey, this is the distillery. And again, four years ago, I knew nothing about this distillery. And mm-hmm. every time they've been great whiskeys. I will say this about them, though. Most of them do not do well in the neck bore. It takes a second. You really, this is a distillery you really even need. Even this bottle. Like, even I'll, this bottle. I'll have two drinks of it, and I'm like, yeah. Put it's it intense, away. it's rich, but Put it away. it's missing. And then I'll come back a month later, and I'm like, God. Yeah, this one's been open for about two and a half, three months, <clears> I think, this particular one. But yeah, you have to, with these um, heavily shared ones, you got to give them a little bit of time. And they just open up into magic. Yeah, well, yeah again, even the bourbon casks. I mean, I'm telling you. And that Vino Barique? What was that, oh, 15 yeah. or 16? Man, that thing was white chocolate perfection. Yeah, I actually got to try out one of the first batches uh, from Stephen Connor recently. All right, so Beautiful. we're, we're done doing the commercial form. All right, so back to this one. Uh, we did <laughs> we did add some. We, we gush over this story. I uh, told you guys, this was not going to be a review. It's going to be a love fest. Yeah, it is. We're going to get slap happy and goofy. Yeah, this is a great whiskey. All right, so, <clears throat> so we added some water. I will say that oak note becomes more crumbly, more liquid 37, buttery, you know, uh, old bread type note to it. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to add some more water even because it's, I mean, it takes water beautifully too. Yeah. Anybody worried about like overwatering this no. one? You can add a good bit. A good wall. Not only is it high ABV, but on top of that, that cask is, is rich and it's, it's a lot to punch through. It's just getting more and more chocolatey. You will remember this whiskey. I don't know if it's butterscotch or it's caramel or it's like a creme brulee where they kind of like toasted a, a vanilla. It's There's a, some other sweetnesses in here. Oh my god, I just got a huge like cherry jam. Yeah. Oh yeah. Where did that go? I, mean, I just got hit with like cherry jam, like intense. Vanilla root beer again on the nose with water. Oh, you know what it is? It's so almost what, like a, it's like a root beer float. When I was a kid, like there was this uh, place, I know, like they did, they had flavored um, Coke. Okay. So you could get like a cherry Coke, like official bottling, and then mm-hmm. add like vanilla. It's like five guys. I, I think they do that now too. But this mm-hmm. is like this is old like school like sure. parfait kind of place, and they would do the same thing with milkshakes. Mm. So they would do a milkshake where you get like cherry Coke, and then you could add like vanilla to it. I got hints of that. Buddy, I again a second ago I said it oh. root beer float, <clears throat> vanilla root beer. Root beer float with cherry, with like cherry syrup, yeah. Yeah. syrup, like like again, like the cola syrup. Almost, you put like a scoop of those cherries in there, almost like a, a banana. You split. Definitely got one of those on top, and there's, there's whipped cream in here too. Mm-hmm. My goodness, yeah, yeah. The water really actually helped. <laughs> Honestly, I, I never add water to the nose on this. I mean, I have, but I, a time or two. I mean, for the sake of you're really, you're know, really digging in the notes because usually um, it's not my first drink of the night. No, this no. It, you know, nor, nor is it tonight. For the first drink of the night, I, you know, the, it is a little astringent. It is a little spicy, and you can't drink anything after it. Yeah, you're really, you, if this is your first drink of the night, it's a commitment. It's, <laughs> yeah. it, it's a commitment to stick with this bottle the rest of the night. <laughs> you're, you're drinking Cavalon all night at 60%. Yeah. Like, you're not, you can't go off of it. Yeah. If you start your night with this, you end your night with this. Like, like yeah, you basically could drink another whiskey that you're not going to taste, and then drink another whiskey you're not going to taste, and then maybe that third whiskey you can start tasting. Yeah, it's going to get buried quick. You're going to be hammered before you taste again. Uh, yeah, excellent, excellent whiskey. Oh, my God. And just, it, it's complex. It just keeps getting better with water. Mm. But, but I will say this. You need to really be used to sherry bombs and high ABV cast strength whiskey to really appreciate this one. This is yeah. not um, without its challenges. And you've got to appreciate that beautiful, beautiful, but yes, aggressive oak. And this is everything I want personally as an oak. No, you got to remember, I come from the bourbon world. King of Kentucky is my favorite bourbon. One of my top five whiskeys of all time. And it's because of the beautiful, oak explosive notes. oak. Mm-hmm. This does it well. Linkwood 37, that's... They did it well. That's really the only thing on Linkwood 37 that's really exceptional. And that's sure. why that's a great whiskey. Sure. Great exceptional oak. Exceptional oak. Uh, but, the, you know, there's not a lot of whiskeys that I think are exceptional oak. So this is definitely, again, if you can find an old version of this, maybe not this cast, but another one, I'd give it a shot because, God, I hope they do it again. I hope this is like a thing they keep putting out whiskeys of this quality. This is just like that Lafourg 22. This takes you as dangerous and as far as you can go with it not, not going too far. It walks, as I said at the beginning <clears throat> of the video, it walks such yeah. a fine line. It gets almost too much a lot of times and never gets too much. Oh, because of a great cask and a great spirit. Oh, man. Aged incredibly long based on its conditions. 
Yeah. I mean, the only thing I can say is imagine a 59% Glendronic 35-year-old mm-hmm. first fill that somehow didn't go bad. Yeah. I mean, uh, for, for, the, for the people who haven't gone, you know, those ages, I mean, Balcones and Amrut, they're putting a funk to their in their oak that I think is a little off-putting that's not here, but they're kind of getting those similar levels of oak intensity. But again, they, they put in funk. Yeah. Now, I like Amrut's funk. I like some Texas funk. This isn't a funk. This is just intense punch-in-the-face uh, oak levels, yes, but it's done without any of those off notes that I yeah. so often yeah. talk about. Yeah, with none oak. of them. Like, it doesn't have that, like, you know, I talk about sometimes, sometimes the wood. Yeah, but it's like they just fresh cut it. Or, yeah, that's like you get it up, you know, Ikea. This is big and rich with none of the negatives. There's even like I mean I'm starting there's I mean there's some there's cinnamon spices in here there's mm-hmm. there's nutmeg even Chris, yeah nutmeg Christmas spices yeah but it, but it's not like ginger at all burnt really. cinnamon good I mean are you getting ginger oak. here because I don't think I'm getting any ginger no. the sherry's too big yeah I mean I'm getting I'm getting like those baking spices I'm not getting ginger I'm not getting like gingerbread cookies or something it's very very dessert very Christmas time style yeah. whiskey. But it's like chocolate desserts. Yep. This is even outshining like the Glendronach 18. I mean, that's we just had that, and that's hard to do. <laughs> this walks all over it. It does. All right, buddy. <clears throat> Time of reckoning. We're well-versed in this whiskey. We We're are. as far as a whiskey score on this one. This kind of falls into, I think, the uh, the Glendronach uh, 27, where I kind of said, you know, I said, look, enjoyment score versus actual score. Okay. I do think the oak notes are a little too high here. For but, most people, yes. Yes, I'm going to give this a 92, mm-hmm. but my enjoyment score is a 94, Mike. This is legitimately in the upper echelon of whiskeys I've ever had. I love this stuff. Um, your response there um, is why I have often said that whoever responds first, or excuse me, whoever <clears throat> is waiting to respond needs to write it down ahead of time. <laughs> because I am exactly at a 92 as far as an overall whiskey score. As far as how much I like this whiskey, I like this whiskey as much as I like any whiskey. I'm not saying it's my favorite whiskey yeah. of all time. Um, if I had to rate it, I'd put it probably not in the top five, but one of, maybe maybe at the edge of my top ten whiskeys ever. Um, I mean, it's hard. I'd have to write it down. I'll You're, put it this way. You give me a Lagavulin 24, Fish Yield 2015, mm-hmm. and this, at least 30, 40% of the time, I'm going to rather drink this. Every time I go to this whiskey, I'm happy drinking this whiskey. Yeah. Every time. Every time. I've never not enjoyed this whiskey. I've never thought that this whiskey was special. Mm-hmm. I've never thought to myself, I don't need another bottle of this whiskey. Let's put it this way, Mike. If I knew I could get this bottle forever, mm-hmm. I don't think there'd be a single night I have more than two drinks that this isn't one of them. Yeah, no. it, 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 it just I can drink this with any other whiskey, and I love it. Ed. As I There's, told you. you know, sometimes you, whiskeys don't pair. Sure. It doesn't matter. It, it just You can drink it. No, it's it, amazing. It's every amazing. time. Every time. Um, it doesn't matter. Again, it's a commitment. If you drink at the beginning of your night, it's perfect if you drink at the end of your night. Um, good on cold nights. Um, man, this is just a bomb. This to me, <laughs> as, as I told you years ago, or a couple years ago when we first got in this whiskey, I said, Dustin, I really think this is taking a place that McAllen cash strength, mm-hmm. whether it was 10 or NAS, always held for me early in my whiskey drink. Yeah. I know for 100 bucks. I could go get a huge 60% sherry bomb whiskey that was around 10 years old. It was dark. Yeah. It had good, you know, sherry cast in it. And you just can't replicate that experience in any way else. You can't put peat in it. You can't put, you know what I mean? You need that young, bold, big bang sherry. And this does it even better because even though it's only 10 years old, like those McCallums were, mm-hmm. it still is aged in a different climate, so it comes off way older. But it gives you all the good things yeah. you want out of that 10-year-old McCallum cast strength. Yeah. And age and extra and richness and none of none of the astringent things that sometimes McCallum sometimes would do a little bit of burnt matchstick. Yeah. Which isn't terrible. But that, this has none of that. No. Finding this was like, oh my God, I have found the magic equilibrium of yeah. age, proof, intensity, richness. And look, if you're looking for a subtle whiskey that's just gonna give you lots of little nuances and it's nope. like a little Something one sip a month you're having. Came the wrong party. No, nah, this is the biggest, the boldest, the richest, the most intense. This is the X Games, you know. Yeah, this is, this is a Red Bull athlete. You think, yeah. You think you jump off a plane, I'm going to jump out of space. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, this, this is like this, the X Games where like, they made the ramps so big that the skaters were getting injured. And they're like, oh my God. But also they, there were a few jumps that were like, 
Oh my God! I don't know how I don't know how you can take this further. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, your palate just can't. I, I don't think you can appreciate any more intensity than this. I mean, it's uh, already uh, pushing it for a lot of people. For sure. No, you're gonna have to like single malt Scotch whiskeys. You're gonna have to like cherry bombs. You're gonna have to like high ABV, and you're gonna really have to like all three to yeah. appreciate this whiskey. But if you can. Man, this is it. You found it. You yeah. found it, seriously. And I I remember over the past couple of years buying these and buying these, and me just thinking to some degree, like, are we the biggest idiots on the planet? Or, do, or are we just the only, are we like mad geniuses? Because like, <laughs> no, like this has lasted for like three years on this website. There's only 400 bottles, and it feels like we just buy them all the time. Yeah, we just kept buying them. We're like, what is going on? How is this still here? There's only 400 bottles, and I'm, I was doing the math. And between people I talk to, people you talk to, mm-hmm. and like their their self disclosed bottle counts, which I don't always believe, my friends, that they only bought one or two. Just saying. Yes. Some of you guys I know by more than you tell me. You don't have to lie to us like we lie. You lie to your wives. If you bought seven, <laughs> you bought seven. I, I'm applauding you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I, at one point, I was pretty sure we were nearing a hundred bottles in our circle. Yeah, of our like, circle group, and it's right. a small circle of friends. I mean, I remember one guy who just got one of these like at the very last second before they disappeared. He messaged me and he goes, I thought you were blowing a little bit of smoke, man. I thought you were exaggerating a little bit. He goes, I just put an order in for three more. And I'm like, I know you put an order in for 30 more. Whatever was left, I think he actually bought them all. I think he went and said, okay, this is this quantity isn't available. All right, let's knock it down five. This one is? Okay, let's pump it up three. Oh, trust me. We, I got a backstory here for you, Mike, but... There's a way you can find out how many they have left. Yeah, you called them one time. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were we were always we were always making an excuse to get this bottle as well as bring you you know other great whiskeys. But uh, this one was always just something we came back to and just kept buying, kept buying, kept buying. And you know, some people loved it. Some people thought it was a bit much. Yeah. And guys, this is probably one of our longest videos ever. I don't care, Mike. I don't think we need to cut a word. This is honestly this is a love song to just one of these. Incredible whiskey. Waited that, so long to bring this review. Yeah. So long. Such a great whiskey. Oh, yeah, I mean, this is just a, this is a love ballad to what really what whiskey can do and can be. And you know, the guys who've had five hundred thousand different whiskeys. Mm-hmm. Those of you who've tried everything, and you're always looking for like that next like new experience. Yeah, you new experience. Remember. Yeah, yeah. I mean, something that's just different, intense, but also good. Good, yeah, and like, you know, can this be different? Yeah, it's gotta be good. Because here's the thing like, there are whiskeys that are different for the sake of being different. Mm -hmm. And, like, I, for example, um, Old Carter, they put out a listen, Kentucky whiskey, not bourbon, not it was Kentucky whiskey. We don't need to go through examples. Weird, you know, when you get a whiskey and you're like, bang, this is a great whiskey. Like that little frog I just picked up that 22, I was like, this is a great whiskey, but I expected that to be a great whiskey. This one, the first time we tried, we didn't expect to be a good whiskey, and we're like, wow. It's yep. like the Chateau Labat. I was like, yeah, it's a bourbon. I tried that. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. I, was wrong. I bought this here and somebody said, hey, man, this is a great cherry bomb. And I'm like, all right, cool. And I'm like, why is it so inexpensive for a Cavalon? I'm like, I've already got my like, radar up. I'm like, hmm? Cavalons usually cost more. He goes, no, I'm telling you, it's really good. So it gave you no indication. I bought it. I was like, all right, cool. You're telling me it's old, it's sherry. The only one they were giving a free link here and away with. They were yeah. begging people. They're begging to buy you to buy it. And I'm like, yeah, why are they giving away stuff? So I got it, poured a glass, nosed it, and I went, Oh. Oh. You knew instantly. <laughs> I'm like, this is not like any Cavalon I've had before. This is a different uh, this is a different beast. You know when you your first couple of orders of this, if they put it in a secondary large box to put the individual boxes into, you ordered a few. Well, Mike, as you know, for a while here, when I came to Mike's house, I actually brought a case box yeah. from this because I actually Columbus. ordered a case at once and they literally put, put the, the, put the case, case box from on there. in another box and, and sent it to me. And they have a great little box too. It's very, comes yeah. up very... And boring. I got the official Glencairn um, mm-hmm. box with the uh, Whiskey World Glencairn so I know for sure that they order them from Glencairn. Great service, great website, yeah. great pick on a bottle. We love this whiskey. We're both at a 92 but our enjoyment factor of this one is, is as high as pretty much any whiskey we've ever tried. Yeah. Um, I feel like aggressive bulb cherry bomb whiskeys. We've said it before. You owe it to yourself to give yourself this one a try. Um, not for the faint of heart. I'll tell yeah. you that. You better be ready. You better be ready. Anyway, Dustin, until next time, what do we wish the folks? Exceptional drinking. Mm. See you next time.